What you've hopefully noticed in the discussion so far is that sometimes it's beneficial to think in terms of the domain and equations that are placed at the um, mesh points in that domain. And sometimes it's convenient to think about the matrix. Okay? And that's what we're going to do right now. Now, the very important thing is the sparsity pattern that we saw came from the fact that when you look at any mesh point, the value there had to somehow be averaged over the points around it, also taking into account the load at that point. Okay? And the fact that you had to take the average of the point around it meant that a non-zero appeared in the matrix if and only if it was a member of this five-point stencil. Okay? We'll take the point itself to be connected to itself, but it's also connected to the points around it. So there is this um, connection between the graph that tells you how the values at other points in the mesh influence a specific point and the sparsity structure that you end up seeing in the matrix. Right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to try to take advantage of that so that we can expose clean blocks of zeros in our matrix. And this is how it goes. Okay? Here we have an example of a 5 by 5 mesh. Okay? What if we separated this graph by identifying these points right here, and we're going to call that the separator. Okay? Now, if we ordered all of our points on this side of the separator first, and then all of the points on this side of the separator second, and then finally all of the points on the separator, then what do we notice? None of these points are connected to these points. That translates into zeros. And there, these points are connected to those points. That would translate to non-zeros. And similarly, there are connections between these points, the separator and the right half of the domain. So there we would expect non-zeros as well. Hmm. How can we translate that into a matrix? Well, here we have our matrix. And what we really are saying is, let's take our solution vector x and let's think of it as a subvector x sub l, a subvector x sub r, and a subvector x sub s, where these are the values associated with this left subdomain, the right subdomain, and the separator. Okay, so now we have partitioned this. Now, the matrix similarly can be partitioned into blocks. Now, remember, we're doing this times that to equal a corresponding subvector of the right hand side. And notice that that subvector on the right hand side is ordered similarly to the points that are part of this submatrix right here. So, what does that mean? Hmm. Hmm. Well, what that translates to is that this block of our matrix that corresponds to this right here only captures how those values are connected to themselves. Okay, now there is some sort of connection here, so there is some sort of non zero pattern in that sub matrix. Similarly, there's some sort of non-zero pattern in this submatrix and in this submatrix because within each subdomain there are connections between the mesh points. However, this block right here captures how 
the left subdomain is connected to the right subdomain, or the symmetric argument there. What we notice is that there are con no connections there. What that means is that this is a nice big block of zeros right here, as is this. Okay, This right here, this block right here, captures how the left subdomain is connected to the separator, and there would be non-zeros there. Similarly, there would be non-zeros here, and by symmetry, there would be here and here as well. And what you end up with is this arrowhead matrix like this. Now, there's further sparsity here, 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 here. But, you know, at 30,000 feet looking at this, the important thing is that we've identified nice big blocks of zero. Now, why is this important? When you do a Kolesky factorization, you can actually do a Kolesky factorization of this submatrix, then do a triangle solve with this submatrix, and that's matrix. This is where the triangle comes from. And then do a rank A update of this block that corresponds to the separator. Okay. Then you don't compute with these zeros. Then you move on to here. And again, you can do a Kolesky factorization of this, do a triangle solve with this block, and then do a symmetric rank A update of this block. And not only are you avoiding computing with all of these zeros, but you also recognize that a lot of this computation can happen in parallel. So there's an advantage to creating parallelism, which on modern day architectures is important. And there is an advantage of actually avoiding all of those zeros.